too self-conscious. It's like you look at the camera. How could you think when you're staring at a camera? You know, I don't understand the two things together. I could do radio because I'm not worried about how I look and what I'm pushing, touching is my shirt, my nose, my tie, nothing. It's pure thought. This is pure intellectual stream of consciousness based upon what I've read and what I'm uh, studying at the moment and what I want to say to you. My belief system is apparent to you. But television, you have to perform in a different way where you're so self-conscious about your performance that you can't deliver the message as powerfully as you can in radio. i got to watch out with that long as. I'm picking it up. It's like a disease from Obama. And I find myself like stretching out the vowels as I'm thinking. It's not good. This is not good from listening to him. And so Mr. Putin shows a sign of weakness. And, you know, watch out for that long A, man. That's the one that's doing it. I'm not kidding. Listen, in the, in the speech we played, he tries to knock Putin. He's, he's only knocking himself. He says, Putin went into Syria not out of strength, but out of weakness. Play it for a minute, Robert. Just play it. Mr. Putin had to go into Syria not out of strength, but out of weakness. Because his client, Mr. Assad, was crumbling and it was insufficient for him simply to send them arms and money now he's got to put in his own planes and his own pilots and the notion that he put forward a plan and that somehow the international community sees that as viable because right, he's stretching it out you uh, can hear he's groping you can hear a man groping you can hear it in his voice he's stretching it out because he knows he's he, he's just, as he's saying the speech that the girls wrote for him he realizes how thin it sounds and how empty it sounds and how weak he sounds. There was an interesting article. Uh, I hope it's still on michaelsavage.com. No. no. Oh, the trade pact. Did you hear about that? My headline, Obama sells out U.S. workers in massive trade pact with Asia. You thought NAFTA was bad under the Clintons? It's nothing compared to what he did overnight. He sold us out with a new Asia trade pact. A dozen Pacific Rim nations are going to destroy us. There's no such thing as free trade. He did it to throw American workers under the bus and destroy the remnants of American industry. It's sickening. And I know I'm right on this again. You know how I know I'm right? Because even the unions, the AFL-CIO, which you think would be in his corner, have turned on him on this. Even Bernie Sanders has turned on Obama over this trade deal. Obama is perhaps the worst traitor to virtually every group that has ever believed in this man. He is so untrustworthy. He's exactly what he looks like. He is the bad kid in the classroom who would step on someone's foot and then scream, teacher, he stepped on my foot. Cheat on someone's exam and then tell a, tell a teacher that the other guy stole the exam from him. This guy is so untrustworthy that even the unions have turned on him. Even Bernie Sanders has called him what he is. That's a big story. But that's not the story I was getting at. It was about his personality. Not that he's a traitor, which he is. He tr sold us down the river. You've got to see the story. No, I'm talking about another story about the metrosexual part. I wish I could find it. I think it's gone by now. He wants Syria as Obama's Watergate. That's from the New York Post. That's not it. Ah, here it is. Here, London Telegraph came out over the weekend. I got a minute to talk about it. Vladimir Putin sees Barack Obama's coolness as weakness, and it's hurting America. Russia's bombing of American allies in Syria underlines how much more powerful and provocative Putin is than he was before Obama took office. It's an interesting story. And it says the view, it's being viewed as the latest example of American humiliation abroad. And they're talking about Obama playing it cool when it's really a, a mark of his weakness. And it says it all comes in the heels of Obama's drawing of a red line regarding the use of chemical weapons, only to back down when the Assad regime, by most accounts, used them. Weakness invites provocation and never one to miss an opportunity to outmaneuver Mr. Obama. Mr. Putin provided a self-serving opportunity that would also allow the president to save face. Moscow would push Syria to put their chemical weapons under international control. And then they go on to the personalities here. For those paying attention, Mr. Obama's foreign policy worldview has failed. This is a foreign newspaper, if you want to call Telegraph uh, a foreign paper. They say Obama's foreign policy worldview has failed. This is all is in a week, by the way. The suggestion that America could leave a vacuum that wouldn't be filled by our adversaries, the idea that the international community, whatever that means, would respect us more if we were to retreat from the world was always a farce. At some level, listen to this carefully, high-stakes diplomacy is still a game of chicken where machismo matters. Even domestically, there are still traces of this left in our most civilized politics. We recently witnessed an example of Jeb Bush standing on his toes during a photo op, attempting to appear taller than Donald Trump. This is childish and petty, 
and yet serious people play these power games. But nobody plays them better than Mr. Putin, the former KGB officer who likes to ride horses while shirtless. It's nice to live in a postmodern country, but we shouldn't delude ourselves into believing the rest of the world is impressed by our sophistication. <laughs> in the vast majority of the world, power, or the perception of power, is what matters. In America, President Obama's brand of metrosexual coolness works well. Did you hear that? He mocked Mitt Romney, for example, as a Neanderthal stuck in the 80s for suggesting in 2012 that Russia was still our main geopolitical foe. Mr. Obama's mix of cool and soissants and biting sarcasm plays much better with the latte-sipping crowd than it does with former KGB operatives, where his style and rhetoric suggests weakness, softness, and a lack of commitment and moral clarity. Today it looks like he's allowing Russia to push America around and dictate the terms of our being pushed around. One can only imagine that this might impact the 2016 presidential race. My theory is that it helps Donald Trump. He's perceived as a winner who could stand up to Mr. Putin. Well, I'll go on a little later. But uh, Mr. Trump is on tomorrow, and I think that the writer got this wrong. Because Donald Trump will not stand up to Mr. Putin. He actually admires him. See, they got this wrong. Everyone's vilifying Mr. Putin when, when, in fact, Mr. Putin is the new sheriff on the world stage who finally went after the villains, the very villains that Obama has pretended to be fighting, but all along he was only fighting the American people. I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. You know, I have a Trump soundbite, even though he's going to be on tomorrow. I don't know whether he's channeling me or I'm channeling him in some regard, but... I said these same things. He said the Middle East would be more stable if Saddam and Gaddafi were still in power. It's shocking when you hear a major national figure like Donald Trump saying it, but I have said the same thing. It's not that they're good people or were good people, but they knew how to control the tribes in plain English. They knew how to keep the throat cutters in contr under control. You don't control them with the Geneva Convention. And that's what Saddam did, and that's what Gaddafi get, did as bad as they were. And the sad part is, is that they could have been controlled and they could have been useful for us, but the fools who run Washington made the drastic mistake of killing Gaddafi and killing Saddam, and as a result, the Middle East is in free fall right now. So, you know, you blame who you want. You can blame Bush. You can say he went after the wrong target. I've heard that. But what's the difference who you blame? The solution is what Russia's doing, bombing the vermin. That's so he's bombing the worst of them. Let's put it to you that way. He's bombing the worst of them. It's that simple. A bunch of these cockroaches are out of control, and he's bombing them. And that's what needs to be done. What, what do you want to do, negotiate with them? So they'll cut your throat next? I don't know if I have the time here. Minute 17. Start clip 7. See where it goes. Let's just I was 17 talking to a general two days ago. He said, we have no idea who these people are. We're training people. We don't know who they are. We're giving them billions of dollars to fight Assad. And you know what? It's very possible. I'm not saying Assad's a good guy because he's probably a bad guy. But I've watched him interviewed many times. And you can make the case, if you look at Libya, look what we did there. Mm -hmm. It's a mess. If you look at Saddam Hussein with Iraq, look what we did there. It's a mess. Right. So he's saying exactly what needs to be said. Of course, I said it, so they dismissed it as a crackpot uh, who was saying it. But it wasn't. It was 100% accurate because I'm not the ch uh, Jake Woodpecker. Jake Woodpecker reads what they write for him. Whatever the, the ugly guy in the back with the curly hair and the big eyeglasses writes for him, that's what Woodpecker reads on the screen. But I read it directly from my DNA, that's all. So here we are, another half hour to go on the Savage Nation. And I may take you to places you uh, least expect. Because I'm not so sure where I want to go. So I would suggest you be here for the ride. Right here on the Savage Nation of the third hour of the Savage Nation, which means we go to, I think we'll go to callers, 855-407-282, 855-407-SAVAGE, and if you get on with Savage, you'll reach more people than you've met in your entire life, so I know it's intimidating, but it's your chance to editorialize something that used to be done with newspapers, but no more, because you never can get your letter published if you don't believe in uh, Borders Language and Culture. You believe in Borders Language and Culture, you're not getting your letter published, it's that simple. So I want to go to my website, michaelsavage.com, and read some of the stories that I found interesting and put them up there. Top right, michaelsavage.com. Oh, that's the picture of me in the green shirt at WABC. 
There's so many different pictures of me on the website from different phases of my life. I don't know which one is me anymore. Savage's digital streaming success reaches new heights. He maintains the number one spot with the highest ever share. No, that's true. It's a new story. Thank you very much for uh, metrics through our cloud-based server via TalkStream Live's website, gadgets, iPhone, iPad, and Android apps, and our click-to-listen links on social networks. This report only ranks the talk shows that are listed at TalkStreamLive.com. Savage is at a 27 share, the highest ever. Further extending his number one streak with massive margins over all other talk competitors. Followed by Russia 2, Glenn Beck at 5, Laura Ingram at 3. Art Bell returns to talk radio at midnight in the desert as predicted for his first ratings period. Lands among the top 25. He's back, huh? How do you like that? All these old guys. Everybody wants to be in the business. It's funny, everybody in the world wants a talk show. Do you know that? Oh, what do you do? Talk radio? Big deal. I could do that. Everybody wants to get in on the act. It's a tough thing to do for three hours a day. Go try it. Try it for three minutes a day. Just try it for three minutes a day. We'll give you the microphone sometime. Just see if anyone listens to you and see how you sound to yourself when you listen back. It's like, remember when you were a kid and the first time you ever heard yourself on a tape recorder? How weird your voice sounded? Or when, let's say... When someone took a video of you, said, that can't be me. I'm much bigger. I'm better look. No, that's who you really are. <laughs> it's a tough medium. Th everyone wants to be on the act. I bet you most actors in Hollywood like to have a mic in their house where they can just get up and pontificate. Except who's going to book that act? I'm just talking here. I'm just saying. I did the world news. Now I'm slowing it down a little. The best thing I did today was me in the first hour. So there's no way to top it. But the sound bite that was the best was the character Peter Quinn, the assassin from the series Homeland, talking about no strategy in Syria. I love that. I don't want to repeat it. I may use it again tomorrow. It's so good. But I just said so someone will steal it already by tomorrow morning. The producer who heard it already will be on the show. Oh, look at this one from Biden that I didn't get to. What a cretin. There are, there are homophobes still left. Most of them are running for president. Can I ask you why the gay issue is still an issue at all? Can anyone tell me why this issue is still an issue? Who cares? Haven't we had enough of this topic for the rest of our lives? This is what Biden's going to run on. So now it's anti-gay bashing. You heard it first on my show. Remember for years it was gay bashing. If someone was gay, you picked on him. I never did, but there was a period in American history where it was gay bashing. So now it's anti-gay bashing. That's the best the idiots who run Biden's uh, brain can come up with? Anti-gay bashing. You hear this? Beyond belief. Listen to clip 25. You're not going to believe how stupid he is. He's actually dumber than he appears. Listen. Because of how far you've moved the American people, the remainder of the work and much work has to be done, I oh. promise you, will come much more quickly oh and my more God. surely. It will increase in its rapidity the change Ugh. that we need. Oh, my God. I strongly support the Equality Act. Can you will believe pass. this is going to run for the president? With ISIS throwing gays off roofs, this schmuck is, is appealing to people on this basis? Keep and playing this. Forward. The American people are already with you. A Look at the drum. numbers. Oh, there's homophobes still left. Most of them are running for president, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Woo! Great job, Joe, you moron, you. You're as dumb as you look and even worse, you putz, you. That's the best you could do in an age when ISIS is throwing gays off roofs? Is call Republicans homophobes? And you think running on this ticket is going to get you to the presidency? I'd be quite shocked if it does, Joe. I think you ought to really go into retirement. Holy God. I, you know what? Run, Joe, run. That's all I can say. Run, Joe, run. I'd like to see you and Hillary and Bernie and O'Malley and the other pack of leftists debate each other. Then I know there's even a party out there. What an embarrassment you are. I didn't even want to get excited in this. I was trying to, like, cool it down. It's like a truck that's been going too fast down a highway. Well, when you come out of the High Sierra on Highway 80, if you live in California, you know what I'm talking about. I haven't been up there in a long time. But remember, when you come down Highway 80, coming out of the high, 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 you know, high mountains, there's truck turnouts. It says slow her down. And if you can't control the truck or the brakes go out, you pull her into one of those sand pits on the side of the road. That's what I'm trying to do here is pull my truck into a sand pit but what just happened is it's still careening down the road because of Joe Biden. He just picked up speed when I wanted it to pull off on the side, on the side of the road so I could look down into the American Canyon and holler, 
Michael, how are you? 